Hi, lovely people. My name is Tete J. KFC Richard. Welcome to my online tutorials. Our discussion on numerical and computational methods will be on the application of Gregory Newton's difference interpolation formula. So we said when we talk of Gregory Newton's difference interpolation formula, there are two formulas to that regard. That's Gregory Newton's forward difference interpolation formula and Gregory Newton's backward difference interpolation formula. And we said this is the Gregory Newton's forward difference interpolation formula. And this is the Gregory Newton's backward difference interpolation formula. Please, I will indulge you to check out my videos on how these formulas came about on YouTube. That's how to prove these formulas. In this video, we are going to learn how to apply these formulas in solving some sample questions on when we are restricted to use any of these formulas to solve a question. So this will be a very interesting engagement. So come along. So in that video, I told you how we can get our y naught, our delta y naught, delta square y naught, the delta cube y naught in that order. In that way, it, it also, I said, I show you how we can get our y naught. We, we can get our nabla y naught, nabla square y naught, and nabla cube y naught. However, how do we find the n? So, in case we have a formula, a, a table like this, where there is a formula or a quadratic polynomial or a polynomial function connecting x and y, the n, our n is giving us x minus x naught all over each. What's our x? Our s is any values, giving values. But our x naught, our x naught is the value here. This is our x naught, our x1, x2, x3, and x4. This can also be x naught, x1, x2, x3, and x4. How do we do that? So remember this forward difference and this backward difference. So when we are talking about forward difference, our x naught is the first value of x here. However, if it is a backward difference, our x naught is the value here, the last value here. I hope you get that. Remember, this is backwards. So we we'll start from here to this side. If it is forward, we we'll start from here to this. Now, what is our h? Our h is the difference between the x's. So the difference between these x's are, see the difference between 2 and 4 is 2, the difference between 4 and 6 is 2, the difference between 6 and 8 is 2, and 8 and 10 is 2. So the age is the difference between the x. So I hope you get that. So now we take some sample questions and see how we can apply Gregory Newton's forward difference and backward difference interpolation formula to solve it. So how will you know if a question demands a forward difference formula or a backward difference formula. So this is a table and let's say we have the values of x and y are given the table as this. Okay? And we are asked to find y. Okay? When, when x is equal to let's say 2.5. So when x is 2.5, you say that it's not there. So we are asked to find y when x is 2.5. So you realize that the 2.5 is occurring at the beginning of the table. So we use the forward difference in that regard. So we use the forward difference when the value we are asked to find is begin or is taking place at the beginning of the table. And we use the backwards formula. Let's say to find let's say let's say y when when s is 8.5. So you see that it's occurring at the tail end of the table. So in that case, we use the backward difference. Please, if you use forward difference for this, your value might not be correct. And when you use backward difference for this, it will not be correct. So when you see that the value which you are asked to find is occurring at the beginning of the table, you use the forward difference formula. When you see that the value that you are asked to find is occurring at the tail end of the table, then you use the backward difference formula. I hope you get that. So now we take some sample questions and put all this into practice. So let's look at our first question. You see, 
The following are data from the stem table. That's temperature with pressure. When temperature is 140, pressure is 3.685. Temperature 150, pressure 4.854. Temperature 160, pressure 6.302. Temperature 170, pressure 8.076. Then temperature 180, pressure 10.225. Where temperature is in uh, degree Celsius and pressure is in Pascal. And they say using Grigori Newton's difference formula, find pressure of the stem when the temperature is 142 degrees Celsius and 175 degrees Celsius. So, how do we do that? So, remember, they say that when temperature is 142 degrees Celsius, we should find pressure. And when temperature is 175 degrees Celsius, we should find pressure. So we look at 142 degrees Celsius. It will occur at the beginning of the table. We will use the forward difference formula. And 175 degrees Celsius occur at the tail end of the table. Then we will use backward difference formula to solve that. So what do we do? We need to construct a difference table. Before we do that, we say we should let X be equal to temperature. Then our Y should be equal to the pressure. We can say these are the values of X. And temperature is now X and pressure is the Y. So we construct our difference table like this. Remember how to construct difference table. So we list the values of X here, list the values of Y. The difference between this and this is this. That's 4.854 minus this will give you this. This minus this will give us this. This minus this will give us that, and this minus this will give us this. Then we find a second difference. Please check out my videos on how to construct difference table on YouTube. This minus this will give us this. This minus this will give us that. This minus this will give us this. Since we did not get constant, we continue again. This minus this will give us this. This minus that will give us this. We continue again. Since they are not the same, this minus this will give us that. Since we have one value, there is no need to continue. That means this polynomial function is actually to the fourth degree. I hope you get that. Or maybe fifth degree thereafter. It depends. So now, you identify that to find the 42 degrees Celsius, you need to use Grigori Newton's forward difference formula. So I'm going to write that forward difference formula. Please check out my videos on how the forward difference formula came about, as well as the backward difference on ET. So to find the value of pressure when temperature is 142 de degrees Celsius, we realize that we have to use the Grigori Newton's forward difference formula, and I've quote the forward difference formula to that matter. I've quote it up to the fourth power because our difference table is up to the fourth difference. I hope you understand that. So now we know that our y naught is the value here. Our delta y naught is this delta square y naught. Delta P Y naught and delta forward. So we are going to use these values for the forward difference. I hope you get that. Now, what will be our N? Remember, I told you our N is giving us X minus X naught all over H. So our X, when X is 142, our X is the 142 there. So our N will be 142. Remember what will be our x naught. When we are using forward difference, the x naught will be the first value of x here. So that's 140. So minus 140. And the difference between the x values is what? 140. The difference between 140 and 150 is 10. 160 and 150 is 10. 170 and 1, like that. They are all 10 from. So that means each is 10. So over 10. So this will be equal to 142 minus 140 will get. 2 over 10 and 2 divided by 10 is 0.2. So that means our n is 0.2 and our we know this value. So we just substitute to get the pressure when temperature is 142. So that value will be equal to our y naught, which is 3.685. Remember that will be our y naught, then plus our n, and remember n is 0 0.2, our delta y naught is this value here, that's 1.167, so times 
1.167 then plus our end which is 0 0.2 then 0 0.2 minus 1 over 2 factorial and remember 2 factorial is 2 delta square y naught is this value here that is 0 0.279 so times 0 0.279 then plus we are here now our 0 0.2 which is the n then 0 0.2 minus 1 then 0 0.2 minus 2 all over 3 factorial which is 6 then delta cube y naught and delta cube y naught is this value here. 0.047 so 0.047 then plus the last one so n is 0 0.2 0 0.2 minus 1 0 0.2 minus 2 0 0.2 minus 3 all over 4 factorial then delta of exponent 4 n and delta of exponent 4 n this value is 0 0.002 so times 0 0.002 I hope you get that so now we simplify this so we we'll simplify this further we'll get our y naught is equal to the 3 3.685 plus 0 0.2 times 1.16 times then plus 0 0.2 then 0 0.2 minus 1 will give us negative 0 0.8 then times 0 0.279 all over 2 2 factorial is 2 then plus this we we'll get 0 0.2 times negative 0 0.8 then 0 0.2 minus 2 will be negative 1.8 all over 3 factorial is 6 then times 0 0.047 then the last one plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 minus 1 will be negative 0 0.8 then 0 0.2 minus 2 will be negative 1.8 then 0 0.2 minus 3 will be negative 2.8 all over 3 4 factorial is 24 then times 0 0.002 I hope you get that. So now we simplify. So we simplify further. We can say our n is our 3.685. 0 0.2 times 1.169 will give us 0 0.2338. Then 0 0.2 times negative 0 0.8 times 0 0.279 divided by 2 will give us negative because of the negative here. This will be negative. Negative 0 0.02232. Then this 0 0.2 times positive 0 point, negative 0 0.8 times negative 1.8 times 0 0.047 all divided by 6 will give us positive because of the negative negative here. So we'll get plus and that will be 0 0.002256. Then remember there are three negatives here. So if this will be negative. So 0 0.2 times negative 0 0.8 times negative 1.8 times negative 2.8 times 0 0.002 divided by 24 will give us negative 0 0.0000672 when we add and simplify or subtract we can get we will get our y n to be 3.8987 so we can say therefore temperature temperature okay therefore when therefore when temperature when temperature is 142 degrees Celsius, the pressure the pressure will be will be 3.8987 Pascal. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So the second one, we are going to find temperature. Uh, we are going to find pressure again when temperature is 175 degrees Celsius. Remember, since it occurs at the tail end, you need to use the backward difference formula to solve that. However, we will not construct another difference table. Remember, we are going to use these values.
where this is our y naught, nabla y naught, nabla square y naught, nabla fifth y naught, and nabla exponent four y naught. And all that. So having quote our backward difference formula, please check up how this formula came about. Check out my videos on YouTube to see how this formula came about. So in this case, we need to our y naught becomes the 10.225. Our delta y naught, uh, nabla y naught becomes 2.149. Our nabla square y naught becomes 0 0.375. Our nabla quick y naught becomes 0 0.049. And our nabla exponent 4 y naught is the 0 0.002. How do we find ng? Remember we said the n is always giving us x minus x naught all over each. And our x in this case is the 175 we are asked to find. So we can say our n is equal to 175. Our x naught, remember, is the last value of x here. Since it's backward difference, this will be our x naught. Please be very careful with it. So it's, it said that will be 180. All over our h is the difference between the x's, and we say the difference is 10. So 175 minus 180 will give us negative 5 over 10, and that will be negative 0 0.5. So how we know our n is negative 0 0.5 and our value is substitute? So we can then forget that our y n is equal to y naught is the 10.225. So 10.225. Our n is 0. negative 0. 0.5. Nabla y naught is 2.149. So 2.149. Then we substitute. So our n again, negative 0. 0.5 times negative 0. 0.5, then plus 1 over 2 factorial our nabla square y naught see this is our nabla square y naught that's 0 0.375 so times 0 0.375 then plus now we are here our n is negative 0 0.5 then n plus 1 so negative 0 0.5 plus 1 n plus 2 negative 0 0.5 plus 2 all over 3 factorial then nabla quip y naught is nabla quip y is 0 0.049 so times 0 0.049 then plus this place so that will be negative 0 0.5 then negative 0 0.5 okay so it won't go there so let me bring it here so have negative 0 0.5 then negative 0 0.5 plus 1, negative 0 0.5 plus 2, then negative 0 0.5 plus 3, all over 4 factorial. Then our nabla exponent 4 y naught is 0 0.002, so times 0 0.002. So we can say that our y n is equal to simplifying this, we'll get 10.225, then minus 0 0.5 times 2.149, then minus 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5 plus 1, that will be 0 0.5 over 2 factorial is 2, then times 0 0.375, then plus, yeah, we'll get negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 plus 1 will be positive 0 0.5, Negative 0 0.5 plus 2 will be 1.5 all over 3 factorial, which is 6, then times 0 0.049, then plus here, so we'll get negative 0 0.5, then negative 0 0.5 plus 1, that will be positive 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 plus 2 will be 1.5, then negative 0 0.5 plus 3 will be 2.5. Then times 0 0.002 all over 
So all over three uh, four factorial is twenty four. So we will simplify all this and we take it from there. Okay, so when we simplify, so we have our ten point two two five. Negative 0 0.5 times 2.149 will give us negative 1.0745. And negative minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.375 all divided by 2 will give us negative 0 0.046875. Then minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 1.5 times 0 0.049 all divided by 6 will give us negative 0 0.0030625. Then minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 1.5 times 2.5. Then times 0 0.002 all divided by 24 will give us 0 0.0000078125. When we simplify this further, we'll get 9.10048. So we can conclude that when, when temperature when temperature is 175 degrees Celsius. The pressure, the pressure will be 9.10048 Pascal. I hope you get that. So this is a very very interesting one. We'll solve one more examples on this, and we we'll take it from there. So our second question says that. Using Grigori Newton's backward difference interpolation formula, estimate f of 4.12 in the table below correct to two decimal places, and the values of the x and their corresponding values of f of x are given in the table. So this question is very linear because they even tell us which of the difference formula we should use backward difference. However, if we are not told. Since we are asked to find f of 1.12, you realize that f of 1.12 okay at the tail end of the table, then we have to use the backward difference to do that. So what we do, we let our y to be equal to f of x. Having let it be equal to that, we need to construct a difference table. So our difference table will look like this. Please check out my videos on how to construct difference table on YouTube. So the different 1 minus 0, Okay, we will find it. The, these are the values of x, and these are the corresponding values of y. We we'll find a difference between the y values. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4, 16 minus 8 is 8, and 32 minus 16 is 16. We we'll find a second difference again. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4, 16 minus 8 is 8. Since they are not the same, we we'll go further to find a third difference. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4. Since they are not the same, we go further to find a fourth difference. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2. We are still not it is the same, we find a fifth difference. 2 minus 1 is 1. Since it's 1, there is no need to go further. That means we find out the fifth difference. And remember the question is that we should use Gregory Newton's backward difference interpolation formula. So we have to put the backward difference formula, which is this yn is equal to y naught plus n nabla y naught in the order. And what is the y naught nabla y naught and so forth? Since it is backward difference, we will get those values from this place. Where this is our y naught, this is nabla y naught, nabla square y naught, nabla pip y naught, nabla is only 4 y naught, and nabla is only 5 y naught. Now, how do we find our n? Remember, we said the n is equal to x minus x naught all over h. Where the x is what is given to us to find. That's 4.12. So our n will be equal to 4.12. And what is our x naught? We said our x naught, since it's backwards difference, is the last values of the x here, which is 5. So minus 5. And h is the differences between the x values. So we can see the differences between them is 1. So over 1. On subtract 5 from 4.12, we get negative 0 0.88. Divided by 1, we still get the same thing. So now we just substitute to the formula to evaluate f of 4.12. So we can say our 
you can say f of 4.12 will be equal to the substitution of this into this formula. So our y naught, remember it's 32. So 32 plus what's our n? That's negative 0 0.88. Then times nabla y naught. And nabla y naught is 16. Then plus we are here negative 0 0.88. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 1. I hope you get that. All over 2 factorial. Then nabla square y naught. Nabla square y naught is 8. Then plus. We are now here. So we have negative 0 0.88. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 1. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 2 all over 3 factorial. Nabla keep y naught. And nabla keep y naught is 4. Then plus the fourth as here as negative 0 0.88. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 1. Negative 0 0.88 plus 2. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 3. All over 4 factorial. Then nabla exponent 4 y naught. And nabla exponent 4 y naught is what? Is 2. And the last one, which is negative 0 0.88 for the n. Then negative 0 0.88, which is n plus 1. Negative 0 0.88 plus 2. Negative 0 0.88 plus 3. Then negative 0 0.88 plus 4. Remember, it's to that. And nabla is putting 5 y naught is 1. So times 1, which will be the same thing all over 5 factorial. Five factorial. So we just simplify all these things. Then, so we simplify this further. We get our 32 is there. Then negative. 0 0.88 times 16 then our negative 0 0.88 now negative 0 0.88 plus 1 will give us 0 0.12 times our 8 and 2 factorial is still 2 now we'll come here our negative 0 0.88 is there negative 0 0.88 plus 1 will be 0 0.12 negative 0 0.88 plus 2 is 1.12 times our 4 and 3 factorial is 6 when we come here our negative 0 0.88 is there the negative 0 0.88 plus 1 will be 0 0.12 negative 0 0.88 plus 2 is 1.12 negative 0 0.88 plus 3 is 2.12 times our 2 and 4 factorial is 24 then the last one I will have our negative 0 0.88 and negative 0 0.88 plus 1 is 0 0.12 negative 0 0.88 plus 2 is 2.12 negative 0 0.88 plus 2 that will be negative 0 0.88 plus 3 will be 2.12 then negative 0 0.88 plus 4 will be 3.12 times our 1 and 5 factorial is 120 so now we we'll simplify this and add then we'll find f of 4.12. So, when we we'll simplify this further, that's 0 0.88 times 16. That will be negative 14.08. 0 0.88 times 0 0.12 times 8 divided by 2 will give us 0 0.4224. Then negative 0 0.88 times 0 0.12 times 1.12 times 4 will give us the 0 0.078848. Then it is 0 0.88 times 0 0.12 times 1.12 times 2.12 times 2 divided by 24 will give us the 0. Point, will give us 0 0.208972. Then the last one will give us 0 0.00651915264. I'm, I'm not approximating because I don't want any significant difference or any error. So you can say f of 4.12 therefore, when we add all these things, we get 17.3913 and correct to two decimal places will be 17.39.
Then you can say our f of 4.12 will be 17.39 correct to two decimal places. Without knowing the function that connects x and y, we are able to find a value when the x is given. This is very interesting. Do you also know that Gregory Newton's forward difference and backward difference interpolation formula can be used to find the polynomial function that connects x and y? That's how will be our next problem. Where we learn how to use the Gregory Newton's forward difference formula to find the polynomial functions that connect two values. So our question says that using Gregory Newton's forward difference interpolation formula to find the cubic polynomial function that takes x to x to y in the table below. First, the x values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and they are corresponding one value, they are corresponding one y values respectively are 1, 2, 1, and 10. So how do we do that? So first thing, we need to construct a difference table for that. So our difference table will look like this. So we have the x, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the y, 1, 2, 1, 10. So remember, they say this is a cubic polynomial function. So we will find up to the up to the cubic, then we stop. So we say the difference between 2 and 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. The second difference, negative 1 minus 1 will be negative 2. 9 minus negative 1 will be 10. Then the third difference, 10 minus negative 2, that will be 12. So they say we go in Newton's forward difference interpolation formula. So we call, we quote our forward difference formula. That's why n is equal to y naught plus n delta y naught plus n, n minus 1 all over 2 factorial delta square delta square y naught then plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 all over 3 factorial delta p. So what are the values of y naught delta y naught? So since it is a forward difference we are going to use these values. So we can set our y naught is equal to 1 delta y naught is 1 delta square y naught is negative 2 and delta cube y naught is 12. So what is our n then? Remember our n is giving us x minus x naught all over each. And what is that? So our n is equal to, remember the x is not given here. That's why they asked us to find the polynomial function. And what is our x naught? Our x naught is the first value of x here. Remember, this is a forward difference. So the first value of x here. And the h is the difference between them. And the difference between them is 1. So we can say minus 0 all over 1. x minus 0 is x divided by 1 down is x. So we can say our n is actually x. So in any place we see n, we substitute our x. So we can say our y will be equal to y naught, which is 1, plus n is x, so x, delta y naught, that will be 1, then plus x, x minus 1, over 2, factorial is 2, and delta square y naught is negative 2. I hope you get that. Then plus x, x minus 1, x minus 2, 3 factorial is 6, and delta keep y naught is 12. I hope you get that. So our uh, y will be equal to 1 plus x times 1 will be x. Then 2 divided by negative 2, that will be 1. So we get minus 1 times this x will be minus x bracket x minus 1. I hope you are getting the understanding. Then 6 divided by this 12. 12 divided by 6 will be 2 times this will be 2x, then x minus 1, x minus 2. So I'll simplify further, we'll get our y equal to 1 plus x minus x bracket x minus 1, then plus 2x, I'll multiply these two brackets, x times x, that will be x squared, x times minus 2x, that will be minus 2x. Then minus 1 times s will be minus s, so they will get minus 3x. Then minus 1 times that will be plus 2. So our y will be equal to 1 plus x minus 
x square then plus x I hope you get that then plus this will be 2x squared then minus 6x square then plus 4x and group like things very well we'll get 2x squared then minus 6x square then minus x square I hope you are getting that I'm grouping like things then plus x plus x plus 4x then then plus our constant which is 1 so our y will be equal to 2x squared minus 6x squared minus x squared that will be minus 7x squared then x plus x 2x plus 4x that will be 6x then plus 1 then we can say this is our polynomial function that connects our x to the y. I hope you get that. We find we we'll solve one more question where we use the Gregory Newton's or different interpolation formula to find a polynomial function that connects the x and the y. The good aspect of this is that there is no need to construct two different states. We haven't known the form of the polynomial function. So we we'll solve our next example by using Gregory Newton's forward difference interpolation formula to find the cubic polynomial function that takes x to y in the table below. The x values are ranging from negative 3 to 4 with a difference of 1 and the y, their corresponding y values are negative 45, negative 16, negative 3, 0, negative 1, 0, 9, and 32. Please, you can pause the video and solve. After that, you compare your answers. With mine. So now compare your answers. So you know the first thing to do is to construct a difference table for the values of the x and y. So we construct this difference table. Then we we'll find a difference between the y values. The first difference that's negative 16 minus negative 45, we get 29. Negative 3 minus negative 16, we get 30. 0 minus negative 3 will be 3. Negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. 0 minus negative 1 is 1. 9 minus 0 is 9. And 32 minus 9 is 23. We find the second difference. Since the total is cubic polynomial, we find to the third difference. So the second difference, 30 minus 26 is negative 16. 3 minus negative uh, 3 minus 13 is negative 10. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. 9 minus 1 is 8. And 23 minus 9 is 14. Then the, the third difference. Negative 10 minus negative 16 is 6. Negative 4 minus negative 10 is 6. 2 minus negative 4 is 6. 8 minus 2 is 6. And 4 minus 8 is 6. I hope you get that. Remember, they say we should use forward difference formula. So these are the values we are going to use. I hope you get that. Since it is a forward difference formula, that is the values we are going to use. So we quote our difference formula. That is our yn. Is equal to y naught plus n delta y naught plus n n minus one over two factorial delta square y naught plus n n minus one n minus two over three factorial delta cube y naught where our y naught will be negative forty five. Then our delta y naught is equal to twenty nine. Our delta square y naught will be equal to negative sixteen. And our delta quip y naught will be equal to 6. Now, what will be the value of the n? Remember, we said that n is giving us x minus x naught all over h. So that will be x. Remember, this is forward difference. So our x naught will be negative 3. The first value there. So minus negative 3. And the difference between them, remember, is 1. So h is 1. So we'll get x plus 3 divided by 1 is 2. So our n is x plus 3. So now we start substituting. So our y will be equal to our y naught, which is negative 45 plus n. Remember our n is x plus x plus 3. Then our delta y naught is 29. Then plus 
this place x plus 3 n is 2 x plus 3 then minus 1 so n plus n is x plus 3 then minus this one over 2 factorial which is 2 then delta square y naught is negative 16 now plus this place so our n which is x plus 3 then x plus 3 minus 1 then x plus 3 minus 2 all over 3 factorial which is 6 and our delta quick y naught is 6 oh so I'll polish this further, we can get y is equal to negative 45, then plus 29 times x plus 3, then plus x plus 3, then x plus 3 minus 1, that will be x plus 2 times negative 16, all over 2, then plus x plus 3, then x plus 2, then x plus 1 all over 6 then times the 6 here so we'll polish further again we'll get our y to be equal to negative 45 then plus 29 times x plus 3 before I'll, I'll simplify 2 going to negative 16 8 times so I'll get minus 8 x plus 3 x plus 2 then this is we divide that six. We'll get x plus three, x plus two, then x plus one. I hope you get that. So our y will be equal to negative forty-five when we expand. We we'll get twenty-nine x. Twenty-nine times three will be eighty-seven. Then minus eight. We expand. We we'll get x squared plus five x then plus six then plus x square the same thing here so plus 5x then plus 6 then times x plus 1 please i'm squeezing it so that you understand better so our y will be equal to negative 45 plus 29x plus 87 then minus 8x square minus 40x then minus 8 times 6, which is 48. Then this will multiply this. Remember, x times x will be x squared. x times 5x will be 5x squared. Then x times 6 will be plus 6x. Then the 1. 1 times that will be plus x squared. Then plus 5x. Then plus 6. I hope you get that. So now group light terms, then we we'll see. So our y will be equal to the highest power is s cube. So s cube. Now we we'll bring the s squared terms. So we have negative eight x square, and we have plus five x square, then plus x square. The next is our linear term. So we we'll have plus twenty nine x then so we have 29 x minus 40 x then plus 6 x then plus 5 x then we have our constant term so plus okay so minus 45 then plus 87 minus 48 then plus 6 I hope you get that. So let's simplify. Our y will be equal to x squared minus 8x squared plus 5x squared will be minus 3x squared plus x squared will be minus 2x squared. Now 29x minus 40x plus 6x plus 6x will be 0. Negative 45 plus 87 minus 48 plus 6 will also be 0. Then we can say this is our polynomial function that connects the x to the Y. I hope this has been very interesting. Please, before you sign, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like this video. This will make my YouTube channel grow more and I can record more mathematical content with you. Until we meet again, my name is Didi Kepsi Nichita.